physical training, self-defense training, firearms training, situational awareness, and the warrior mindset. Welcome to the Condition One Podcast. This is a podcast. This is a podcast. We're we're going to be talking about. Welcome to the Condition One Podcast. This is a podcast where we'll be talking about being ready. We'll also be speaking to victim survivors of physical encounters, how they dealt with the aftermath physically, mentally, and spiritually. And good morning. It is January 8th, 2022. Welcome back. Uh, We're here doing the Condition One Podcast with John Riddle. And I hope everybody had a great holiday, uh, Christmas and New Year's. So we're back at it. Uh, Kids are back to school. Everybody's back to work. And like I said, we're back to doing podcasts. Um, Today, we got a total of four uh, podcasts that we're shooting. And first one is me. And I want to talk to you about, give you a safety tip for parking lots and parking garages. Okay. So uh, according to the FBI data that I've uh, looked up and studied that parking garages, parking lots, in stores, malls, uh, strip centers, okay? Uh, They are the third most common locations for violent crimes, okay? As a former police officer of 28 years, um, I have found that a lot of burglaries to vehicles, assaults, uh, you know, dangerous things happen to good people in these areas. So we're gonna talk a little bit about this and why this happens in parking lots and parking garages, okay? First off, uh, typically due to their design. Uh, parking lots, parking garages are usually dimly lit. Um, they are um, in an isolated area, they, depending on the size of the parking lot. Uh, if you go to a mall, your local mall, you're going to see you have a vast uh, parking areas out there. And depending on where you park in these areas, uh, you, know, you can be far away from the population that's coming in and out of the stores. So you're out there by yourself until you get closer to the to the stores, if that makes sense. Uh, plus, the public has general access to these areas. Okay, you can anybody can walk into a parking lot, into a parking garage off the street, uh, especially those who have bad intent. All right. So, breaking down the statistics that the FBI has given uh, on crimes that occur in these areas, all right? anywhere between the ages of 20 to 39 are the, the average age of victims who are accosted, uh, assaulted in, in parking lots, all right? So the crimes in parking lots in 2020, because we're a little behind with the uh, uniform crime reports that we get from the FBI, was about 7%. Residential burglaries or residential crimes, meaning burglaries, home invasions, uh, they're high. Okay, they're high. They're about 51%, okay? But today we're just going to talk about the, uh, the crimes in parking lots. Victims, uh, to the offender ages, the victims' ages usually run about the same, anywhere between uh, you know, 20 to 39 years of age for, for a victim. Gender, male, female, doesn't matter, okay? Uh, they're, they're really not uh, particularly uh, picky about who they want to assault, who they want to rob, right? So the gender really doesn't uh, affect this that much. Uh, Weapons involved, uh, most of the time, uh, according to statistics, 26% from the offender is personal weapons. Personal weapons meaning hands, feet, their body, okay? Uh, We call it a strong arm robbery, which means I use force against you. I have no weapons, but I use force against you um, and threats to, to do the assault. Okay, I grab you, I throw you up against the wall, I tackle you, I push you up against the car, and I force myself upon you in order to get what I want from you. Another area we look at is, is handguns, about 20%. 20% with handguns uh, in the years of uh, 2020, and then it goes a little bit lower with edged weapons. Edged weapon being a knife, could be a screwdriver, box cutter, razor blade, things of that nature that put fear into people 
when they're told to give over their goods. Uh, they don't want to get stabbed. They don't want to get cut. We don't want to get shot. So these things put fear into us and we hand over our goods, right? So if you're ever approached by somebody and they have a weapon and they're demanding something from you, anything that's property, okay, your wallet, your purse, your vehicle, give it to them. There's no sense in fighting with somebody over this, especially if it's something that you can have replaced that insurance can pick up later on down the road. Okay, you got to weigh out what's more important, your life or that property that they want. Okay, so with that, with the statistics, uh, how can we avoid being a victim in these areas? All right, so the first thing, and I'm, I'm always talking about, I'm always up on my, my soapbox about, is uh, your increased awareness, all right? Increased awareness, meaning your situational awareness and being aware of your surroundings. 90% of any type of issues that you may have outside can be curtailed by being aware of your surroundings. If you're aware, you can see things happening or about to happen, um, and you can change your direction of travel, okay? You can, you can change that atmosphere if you see it in time. The problem we have today is we don't pay attention. I see a lot of people in my travels, they have cell phones stuck in their face. They're texting as they're walking, or they pull into a parking lot, and they pull into their parking spot, and the first thing they have to do is they have to check their text messages, their emails, or they have to make a phone call while they're sitting in their vehicles, so we talk about um, awareness, and it's Colonel Jeff Cooper put it into pretty simple terms with the color codes of situational awareness. Now, I've done another uh, podcast on, on these color codes, and I just want to touch base with you. If you really want to see it, see that podcast, um, it's, it's about situational awareness. I get into it a little deeper, but I want to cover it a little bit today so you have an understanding that the color codes – of color code white means that I am in one of two mindsets. I'm either totally ignorant to my surroundings because I'm not paying attention, or the other side of the line is I'm someplace where I know I'm safe, such as at home. I'm at home, I'm with my family, I'm having dinner, I'm watching the game, okay? I have a right and I should believe that I am safe in my own home. But if I'm out and about, driving, walking, and I have my face stuck in a phone, earbuds in, loud music playing in the earbuds where I can't hear anything, um, then I put myself in a situation where I can become a victim, all right? So where we need to be is in what we call a color code yellow. And color code yellow means I'm just at a relaxed state of awareness. In law enforcement and in the military, we have a term called head on a swivel. I want to look around. I don't want to be paranoid, all right, but I want to look around. I want to pick things up, sounds, movement, okay, and I determine whether these sounds or this movement is something out of the ordinary for where I am at that time. So when we drive a vehicle, we should be in a condition yellow. I should be aware of the surroundings around me, other drivers, um, Approaching an intersection, what color is the traffic light? I'm coming up to an intersection where it's a four-way stop. Um, you know, I have to be aware of these things. So we're, we are in a condition yellow at this point, okay? So being vigilant, being aware of our surroundings in a condition yellow. When we pull into a parking lot at a store, whether it be the mall or a strip center, all right, as we pull in, to the parking area, we're looking for a space. Now, what we need to do, what we need to pay attention to is how far am I going to park from my objective? What store am I going to and how far away am I going to park? Some people like to park far out in the parking lot so their cars don't get a ding um, and they're more comfortable parking in spaces where there's no one else around them. Others want to get as close as possible, and they'll squeeze in between two cars so they can walk less distance. Either way, okay, either way, um, we still need to be aware when we get out of the vehicle. So there's something that we call a 10-second uh, ten ten seconds to safety. 
All right, and I pulled this from uh, a company that I that I teach uh, pepper spray, uh, Saber Red, and they have a, a program that it's, uh, it's ten seconds to safety. So when I pull into a parking space, or I'm looking for a parking space. I'm looking around. My head is on a swivel. I'm looking for a good spot. But when I pull in to that space, I want to look around at the other cars. All right, I want to see, is anyone sitting in, in, in any of these cars that are in close proximity to where I am? Are these people just sitting there? Do they look suspicious? Do I have the undescribable uh, white van that has a sliding door on it? And there's a big guy standing outside with his arms crossed staring at me as I pull in, all right? These are what we call cues uh, that we may say, you know what? I don't want to park here. I want to move and I want to park someplace else. So when I pull in, I want to look around. I want to notice these types of things. Then I have to make a decision. Do I move to another spot, which probably should, okay? If you get that feeling, you should pay attention to that feeling and move and go someplace else. Now, if I'm good with it and I get out of the vehicle, then as I exit the vehicle, I turn it off, I exit, I need to look around. I need to look around and as I'm out of the vehicle, do things look normal for where I am? Do things sound normal for where I am? And folks, this doesn't take a lot of time, okay? It it's happens very quickly. You'll know if you hear screaming, if you hear gunshots, if people are fleeing a store, again, this is a clue that something bad is happening and you shouldn't be going in that opposite direction, okay? So now as I am out of the vehicle, I close the door of the car or the, the truck and I leave and I'm walking to my objective. As I'm walking, I'm paying attention still to surroundings of noise, uh, people, okay? And my head is on a swivel. Once I get into the store, okay, is that store operating normal for what they do? I go in, I do my thing, and as I exit, I do everything in an opposite direction. As I'm leaving, I'm looking around, I'm walking back to my vehicle. As I'm approaching the vehicle, I'm looking around to see if there's anybody there that looks like it might be a threat. Then I get into the vehicle, close the doors, start it up, lock the doors, and I'm on my way. So that's your condition yellow for this type of situation, okay? So when we bump it up a little bit more, we go into a condition orange, which means we have to have a plan. If something bad happens to us, then we have to have a plan. And what are we going to do if something, something is, is going wrong? If somebody's attacking me or there's people fleeing a store that I'm walking towards to go into, I have to pay attention to that and I have to have a plan to get myself to a safe place. Now, this plan has to be pre-planned, all right? I have to think about where am I going, what am I going to do when I get there? That plan must include not only yourself, but your family members if you have family members there with you, okay, or friends. So that plan, we think about it, we lay it out in our minds, and then we, we enact it in our head before we go anywhere, Condition red is I have to enact this plan now. Something's happening. Something bad is happening to me um, or my family at the time, and I have to enact that plan that we put together. All right. I always reference the house fire. All right. People who live in a home, a two-story home, and they get up in the middle of the night because they smell smoke, and their downstairs is engulfed in flames. How are you getting out of the house? Do you have a plan? Everybody carries a fire. You know, those who carry firearms keep a firearm in their home, usually in the bedroom. But we have to ask, where do you keep a fire extinguisher, right? How are you getting out of the, the uh, second floor window? Do you have a big pet? Do you have a big dog? Do you have a German Shepherd, a large framed dog that you have to get out of the window? How are you going to do that? So we have to pre-plan things like that. Now you can take that into your personal safety on the outside, and you can work it the same way, okay? So having that plan and being situationally aware is going to, it's going to curtail a lot of issues that you may run into, okay? So garages and parking lots at night, we have to look at lighting, okay? Again, when I said what I said earlier is the lighting in some of these places is very dim, all right? Sometimes the lights are out completely. So we have to see this. 
we have to understand that this might not be the best place to be right now, and we have to change our plans and go someplace else, right? Um, the surroundings, what type of neighborhood is the area in that I'm getting out to, to go to the store, okay? So because we can have people filtering in from the outside into these parking lots to do bad things, right? So we have to also take that into consideration. When you're in your vehicle, when you arrive or when you're leaving, don't sit in your vehicle, okay? Don't uh, just sit there and, and get on the phone, check your, your, your uh, messages, make phone calls. S get in the vehicle, check all that later, okay? Start your vehicle up, get moving. It's, it's harder to, to be assaulted in a moving vehicle than it is if you're sitting there, okay, and letting people approach when you're totally oblivious to your surroundings. So don't linger in parking lots, okay? Um, weapons. When I say the word weapon, a lot of times people refer to firearms, and I, I, not always is a weapon a firearm, okay? Uh, depending on where you live, it could be a firearm, um, it could be a stun gun, it could be a taser, it could be pepper spray, okay? Uh, note, I want you to understand the difference between a taser and a stun gun. A stun gun, it's handheld, and I have to actually reach out and touch someone with it put it on their body, press the button, and the electrical current goes through them. The taser, which is a, a brand name, all right, is fired from a, on a civilian model, it looks like a cell phone. In law enforcement, it looks like a, a, a space-aged uh, handgun. But we point it, we press a button, and it fires two lines out with hooks on the end of it that goes into the body, an electric current goes through those lines and into the body. That's the taser, okay? So, so just so you have a basic understanding of the difference between a stun gun and a taser. The pepper spray, I like. Um, I can reach out and touch somebody with pepper spray between six and 10 feet, all right? And it's very effective. Uh, I've used it often in law enforcement and I've never really had any problems with the outcome. Uh, I've been sprayed with pepper spray numerous times, and I'm here to tell you that as a person who's been sprayed, that it's very effective, All right? So pepper spray can be easily concealed in your hand as you're walking, all right? And that's what I like about it also. The other thing I like about it with, with the general public is that if I spray somebody with pepper spray, I'm not taking their life. I don't have, uh, you know, I'm not going to take somebody's life like I have the possibility of doing with a firearm, okay? So it'll make them miserable for about 45 minutes to an hour when I hit them with pepper spray, but that's fine. I'm not going to be around at that point because all I'm doing is hitting them with the pepper spray and I'm going to uh, get away, get to a safe location. With that said about weapons, firearms, edged weapons, taser, stun gun, uh, check your local laws, your state laws and your, and your city laws. Uh, be sure, you know, I'm in the great state of Florida, so we have different laws than uh, a lot of different states around the country. So we want to be aware so we don't get in any hot water, all right, with law enforcement in what we're carrying and how we're being able to deploy that, all right? Ladies, when you're in parking lots shopping, all right, and you have children, especially grocery shopping. We go out, uh, you have your groceries in the cart with your child. Um, you know, be aware, set your shopping cart up where you can open the back door or the trunk of the vehicle and you can put these groceries in the vehicle and still have access to what's going around in, in your surroundings. Then get your child and put the child in the vehicle, okay? When you're locking your child into a car seat, putting them into the vehicle, you must be aware of what's going on around you. All right, the last thing you want is somebody to come up behind you and shove you into the back seat on top of your child or even into the trunk of a car. All right, so you must be vigilant when you're putting things into the car and tying that child into the, into the car seat, all right? Always put your child in last. Put groceries away, keep your child in the cart um, and so you have an eye on them and then 
once the groceries are squared away, then you put your child in, lock him in, and then you get, get ready to go and leave immediately. Pull out of the parking lot and uh, be on your way. Okay, so I wanted to cover these things with you. It's pretty brief, um, but we're going to shoot a video this week. I'm going to put it out. It'll be out on Instagram. It'll be out on uh, uh, Facebook, right? And it'll be on YouTube. And then we're going to put it on the Riddle Defense uh, website. So it'll give you a little bit more visual on what we're talking about here, okay? So I hope this helps, and uh, I hope you all have a great day. Stay tuned.